Hello, this is Dustin with Home Mender, and today we are going to be replacing an interior door from a house to a garage with an exterior door. You should always have an exterior door when going from a heated and cooled area to an area of your house that is not heated or cooled. We also are going to be doing this without a level. I've been getting a lot of people watching other door videos and saying that we didn't use a level and if you need a level to put in a door you're not very good so I'm gonna show you how let's get to it so the first thing we're gonna to want to do is remove the door casing from both sides so we can get our door jam out of there uh, mine is stained so it's not gonna be caulked but if yours is painted you might want to cut the caulk line right there at the wall so we can free that up without damaging it now I want to reuse my casing so I'm gonna be gentle taking it off got my super bar here just gently pry away Now this other side of the door is painted casing, so we're going to cut that right there at the wall so we're not going to damage our wall and not going to damage the casing getting it off. This is an old school house. Looks like they use long finishing nails. Might come off all in one piece. And that's gonna lift right out. Beautiful. So this is what happens to a door when you use an interior door, where an exterior door should go. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and throw away this knob since it's an interior bedroom doorknob and put a deadbolt and lock set on there. So we're gonna throw our knob away. If you're gonna reuse your knobs, go ahead and pull those off. Now that the casing's off, we can go ahead and get the jam out of there. I like to use a skill saw, cut the jam in half, makes it a bit easier to get it out. Old door jam out. Now we're gonna pull this threshold up. Pry bar. Now that we got the old door jam out, we're gonna check the framing, make sure we got all of our nails cleaned out. Good to go, now we're ready for the new door. Let's prep the door so we can get it in the hole. We're gonna pull these little black tabbies off. And step on those and lift. Got a hardware pack on top of the door. Get that off of there. And we're gonna remove this little lock doodad. Now a lot of installation guys may tell you you need to pull the brick mold off of the door to do it. I find that's false. I like to try to put it in with the brick mold on it. First of all, it keeps it straight. And second, it's less work. However, I want to be able to reuse that stained casing that was on the door originally. So we're going to go ahead and pull the brick mold off before setting the door. Take a hammer. And then use your pry bar to walk down the brick mold just like you did the casing. Now we're ready to set our door in the hole. Bottom goes in first. Door slides right into place. Now I like to secure my hinge side of the door to the stud itself and that way you can shim the strike side and it just makes your door a little more secure. So we're going to kick that side of the door all the way over to the stud. There we are. Now give it a test. Looking nice. Let's go ahead and secure this side to the stud. How do you know how far to put it in? Well, I'll show you. If you open up the door, you 
can feel on this side, this interior side should be flush with the jam. If the outside is not flush with the other side of the wall, you can always trim that out later. But you should make a door look beautiful from the inside first and worry about how to make the outside beautiful later. I'm going to use my screws that came with my hardware kit, make sure I'm flush with the inside wall, and then use the extra hole in the hinge to secure the jam. That's in there. Now here's why you don't need the level. When you shut the door, and it's shutting smoothly without dragging, you can place this other side by where the door contacts the weather stripping. Level is secondary. You want to make sure the door shuts, seals, and is secure. Now I'm going to secure the bottom hinge, and I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the top hinge. Make sure the inside of my door jam is flush with that inside wall. When it's in the right place, go ahead and screw it off. Alright, let's make sure our door is still shutting nice. Looking good. Now you can see when I shut the door in the position of the jam of the strike side is now, it contacts the weather stripping. It's doing awesome. But I can look up at the top and see that it's sitting out about a good quarter inch. That's not going to seal well. I can get a whole finger in between it. So that's going to need to be pushed in just a little bit to get that to work right. Now let's get some shims so we can do the strike side. Now I like to shim mine from the inside because here's where I'm going to be putting my screw. Pull back the weather stripping and we can tuck a screw right in there behind it securing the jam. That way nobody sees the screws and it's good and secure. Alright, we're going to shim that top area. Once you get the shims to they're a little taut, go ahead and screw it off. Now you don't want to over shim and push the jam out. Otherwise, your door's not going to shut the way it did. And secure it right through the shim. Screw is hidden. Now let's do the bottom. Again, make sure your door is shutting nice. Put the jam where you need it, shim it, and screw it off. Sweet. Now let's do the middle. Now the middle is probably the most important part. You can see when I shut my door up top, I've got a nice little quarter inch right there. Nice quarter inch at the bottom, but my middle has considerably more than that. So we're going to get this middle shimmed over, close in this gap to about a quarter inch. You can keep the door shut while you're doing this one. That way you can see how far you need to go over. That's looking good. Let's go ahead and secure the middle. Check to make sure we're working. And that door is shut and sweet. So our door is secure. One final test. My door is contacting the weather stripping all the way down. And remember from the inside, my quarter inch line all the way is uniform without a level. This door is going to shut and seal nice. Let's get it weather stripped. I got my roll insulation here. We're just going to fill the gaps in between the jam and the framing. Stick it in there like so. Now this side is really tight to the jam, to the framing. This is where I secured my jam to the stud. So it's not going to need very much. Just fill any holes that you see. Perfect. Now we're ready to put on the casing. Now we're going to use our original casing and get the nails clipped off with some side cutters. I'm going to use my trusty air nailer and put my casing back on and use the old paint line as a guide. casing is back on. The door is shutting amazingly. It's sealing nice and we did it without a level. So that's a moral victory for me for all the naysayers who said it couldn't be done. So that's it. Our door's in. All that's left to do is put the door casing on the interior. You already know how to do that and set your locks. If you need help with that be sure to watch the how to install a deadbolt and doorknob home mender YouTube video. All that's left here is to caulk and paint. I'll leave that to you. So for Home Ender Inc., this is Dustin. I hope you learned something today, and if you did, don't forget to click subscribe. Thanks for watching.